ballpark last night. But uh, yeah, it, it was uh, I, I, quite impressive what they did. And uh, we'll get to that after we finish up the news. What else is going on in the world? Did you hear about this? The 50th person <laughs> to join ISIS to get an iPhone 6. <laughs> ah, 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 hashtag ISIS iPhone 6 plus. <laughs> Uh, the new edition of Neiman Marcus's Christmas catalog features a four hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar bottle of perfume. Hmm. Yeah. Now, if that sounds expensive for a bottle of per- perfume, four hundred seventy-five thousand uh, dollars, be aware that a lot of the price is wrapped up in the bottle. It reportedly comes in a fourteen carat bottle. Which I believe is Sex specially Panther. designed to be whipped in the face of the nearest poor person when you're done with it. <laughs> what else? A dog is running for mayor in Oakland. Mm. He has a campaign slogan that's made him extremely popular with voters. It's, I'm not a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's ridiculous to think of a dog as a mayor, I know. But remember, this is the same city that thinks of the Raiders as an actual football team. What else? President Obama uh, wants to ramp up Ebola screening at airports. Mm. Uh-oh. Which means they're going to be targeting black people. You know, coming over from places like Liberia and, you know, sort of indigenous folks. And, yeah, anyways, uh, for endorsing a security measure that intentionally targets black people, uh, I believe President Obama was immediately hired as a cop to work in Ferguson, Missouri. It was a bit of a stretch going back to Ferguson there, but I think it landed. What do you think? Yeah, I think so, too. Go on. He's a jackass. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Antidepressants can make you smell. Yeah, when they heard the news, antidepressant users felt sad. They got depressed, so they took pills and smelled better. (laughs) Uh, Or felt better, (laughs) but smelled funny. Uh, You know how the last one landed? That one, yeah, not so much. Uh, Well, this this last thing I just came across my desk. Apparently, Lord is a 45-year-old man gynecologist in Colorado. Oh, if only there was audio proof of that. I do have that. Do you want to hear it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Go for it. I come up with all my best stuff in the bathroom at work. I use this program to import the recordings I make on my phone. Yeah, yeah, feeling good on a Wednesday. Sparkling thoughts. Give me the hook to go on. Oh, oh. What I need now is a little bit of shelter. Dad, Lord's music is actually really good. Thanks, but it gets even better when I add the drum loops. Yeah, yeah, feeling good on a Wednesday. Then with the computer, I can actually quantize Sparkling, everything. Feeling good, feeling Backup good. instruments. Thoughts, and yeah, then finally, yeah, I use the yeah, auto-tune. Yeah. Sparkling thoughts, feeling good on a Wednesday. Giving me the hope, giving, giving me the hope to go on. Amazing. Amazing that South Park ripped that out in, like... You ever watch that, uh... The the documentary about how they make South Park Funkhauser? I saw bits and pieces of it. It's... The pace at which they work is absolutely frenetic. It's crazy. Like, they'll go from not having an idea to having a half hour of television within... It's a very short amount of time. What's the... Can you look it up? What's the documentary called? Yeah. But uh, the thing about that is it really does show, like, they they have almost no time to produce an episode of South Park. Yet it's in it's that, called Six Days to Air. Yeah, Six Days to Air. They make from having zero ideas whatsoever to having written and animated and voiced and edited an episode of South Park. Six days. They turn that around in six days, which is absolutely just if you know about the work that goes into television and you know about the work that goes into animation, that's crazy. My, my sister works as an animator and people are always like, hey, uh, I, I need something in a day. And then she's like, ha, 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 no. Like animation takes a lot of work and a lot of man hours and it's just not an easy thing to do. But they turn it around in six days and then they find time to whip out a really passable impersonation of Lord. Which is crazy, but it just goes to show you how banned in a box music has become. And I'm not saying that takes away from the quality of Lord's music. I'm just saying that uh, people can turn stuff around so quickly. You know that band Capital Cities, Funkhauser? Capital Cities? Of course. Yeah. 
Yeah, so they write all their music really quickly because Capital Cities started off, uh, before they were in a band, they wrote commercial jingles for, for TV and for radio and, you know, different products that they were looking to sell. And I think a lot of the stuff that wound up on their album was just ideas that they came up with while, while trying to, you know, pitch deodorant accounts and stuff like that. It's really incredible. But they say the one thing about being commercial jingle writers is that they're used to working under such incredible amounts of pressure. It doesn't take them that long to whip out an album's worth of material. They're like, we're used to people going, uh, we need a song and we need it in 48 hours. And if it could be finished, mixed, mastered, that would be great. You know, artists, artists whine and complain that they need the right atmosphere. They need the right working conditions. They've got to go get inspired and they'll make no whine until it's time. We're not going to put out another album until we're good and ready. And we've really plumbed the depths of our artistic soul. In the meantime, you can whip out songs with a quickness in this day and age, thanks to technology. It doesn't make them less valuable, but it certainly does make them a little bit more disposable, if that makes sense. And I think it does. L- let's hear that one more time, because that's so impressive how they did that. I come up with all my best stuff in the bathroom at work. I use this program to import the recordings I make on my phone. Yeah, yeah, feeling good on a Wednesday. Sparkling thoughts. Give me the hook to go on. Oh, oh. what I need now is a little bit of shelter. Dad, Lord's music is actually really good. Thanks, but it gets even better when I add the drum loops. Yeah, yeah. Then with the computer, I can actually quantize everything, backup instruments, and then finally I use the auto-tune. Yeah, it's impressive stuff. You know what's not impressive? Lord Live. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know that might not be toe in the company line or anything, but like when Lord came out before it was just like tremendous amounts of overexposure, I heard it and I was like, this is really interesting. This is really cool. This kid is super talented. Like this is, I, I was actually an early proponent of Lord and I honestly thought her music was a little unusual and it would never cross over and just become a thing the way it has. But I remember being really into that Lord album and thinking that's, ooh, yeah, that's 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 some good stuff. I, I like pretty much every song on this, and it's it's very simple. It doesn't sound like they got bogged down in walls of sound. It's just there's not that much going on. And I kind of think of music like cooking, like a really good pasta dish has like four ingredients in it: noodles, tomatoes, garlic, maybe a little salt. That's pretty much it. Oh, and a sprinkling of cheese. And if you use really good ingredients, you don't need tons and tons of them. You don't have to over-season things. And that's what I thought of the Lord album. I was like, it's beautiful in its simplicity. Which sounds really crazy now, because everyone's like, oh God, I'm so sick of that broad. But when it first came out, I was like, wow, this is something different. It stands out. Comes from a young and creative mind, and that's really cool. And I was kind of like an early proponent of Lord. And then I saw her on television playing live, and I was like, ooh, there's two things Lord can't do. One, dance. Two, sing live. Not so much. I found it, and she uses all these backing tracks of her own vocal, which is cool because there's so many layers of her voice that she can never be expected to recreate that live, and I get it, and they want it to sound like the record. But I always notice that she, uh, next time you see her play live, watch. She cheaps out and sings the low parts instead of the high parts, because I don't think she could hit the high parts live. No, I do not. But, you know, I- I'm happy that she's doing that, because she wasn't, uh, she wasn't, she wasn't recruited by ISIS. She has a career. She has a place in the world, which means she's not disenfranchised and she can't be lured by extremist groups like a Syrian woman who has revealed how she was lured away from her life as a school teacher and became a member of a female ISIS brigade before fleeing the group and after witnessing crucifixions and beheadings. The defector, she grew up in Syria. She's known as Khadija. She taught elementary school pupils in the country. Oh, good. ISIS shaping young minds. But left her old life after being convinced to join ISIS by a man she met where? On the interwebs. She became a member of the group's female brigade who are tasked with patrolling streets, making sure that other women adhere to the rules of the Islamic State. But after witnessing 
things like crucifixions and beheadings. She got a little freaked out by the whole ISIS thing and fled the group and has now reached relative safety in Turkey. Anyways, she's 25 years old. She went on CNN and she said that she first joined the protests against Syrian President Bashir Bashar al-Assad before meeting a Tunisian man online who persuaded her to join the Islamic State. Yep. Her job was patrolling the streets, making sure women wear clothing approved by the Islamic State. But she was also trained to dismantle and fire weapons and paid $200 a month. She explained that those not found to be adhering to the rules are lashed by brigade members. Yeah. Used to be a teacher. I'm guessing her retirement plan now is not as good as her old one. But it's very interesting how they grab young, impressionable minds on the internet. There, but for a click of a mouse, went Lord. Have an awesome one. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll do this all over. Oh, no, we won't. Tomorrow's Friday. The week slips away. Tomorrow's a best of, but join us again on a Monday for a brand spanking new show. Thank you so much for being part of Funkhauser and my radio family. 